Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101. Today we're going to be making this laser logo procedure tracer and uh, you can see it can trace different logos. You just have to supply a path and then it can uh, procedurally destroy a wall tracing the logo with it. I can even see some internal structures, cables, wires, things that you can add in uh, manually uh, or even procedurally if you want. Project files are going to be in the description. I'm going to show you how to use uh, the project and also how to make it. You can get the project on Patreon, Gumroad and my YouTube membership page. To make the path trace the logo, you need to have a path like this of your logo. So to do that, you just need an image. Use Shift A to add an image a background image and locate your logo. So I'm going to use the Blender logo here. Just right click it and use trace image and uh, you can trace it like this. You can now remove, get rid of this background and I want to turn this into a curve. So right click on it and change it to Bezier curve. And now I can get rid of this glitch pencil just like that and select this, tap into edit mode. And yeah, we have a lot of points. So I'm just going to right click and decimate curve uh, to get rid of most of those. One thing about this laser tracer, it, you want to make sure that you have one continuous curve so that it can trace from one point to the other just like that. Da, 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 da. So to do that, we need to find a way to connect these curves. You can even check how the curve will trace by just going into the curve data, give it a bevel and you can play around with the start factor to see how this will trace. If the curve is closed and you play with these figures, you won't see anything. So tap into edit mode and use Alt C to open it up so that toggle cyclic and that means that you can open up the curve and now the, the curve can trace. So what I want to do is I want to open it around here. So I'm just going to select these two points, control points and just subdivide them, then delete segment so that I can open it up here. Now that makes it, I think, two points, two curves because it's still opened here. I can select this point, fill them in so that it's no longer open there and I can also dissolve, dissolve that point so that it traces from uh, there. So it starts out, so it will start there, continue, 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 rotate around and uh, then uh, open here. Uh, what I can do is continue this to this area, to this curve. So I'm just going to subdivide this and open up this by deleting this segment. And I just You can find creative ways to make this work, but uh, uh, that's what I'm going to go with. You need to have a continuous loop like that. So after you have something like this, uh, let me just copy it into a new project. Now let's start working on the wall. Just going to scale this up, move it up and then add a few subdivisions and a subdivision surface. i make sure it's set to simple and this way we can procedurally add more subdivisions if you want. Level two, we want to turn this into small chunks. So I'm going to use explode modifier and that only works if you have a particle system. So if I add that and it should be above the explode, that way we can see some chunks just like that. But uh, these chunks don't look very interesting. So I'm going to turn on cut size so that you can add random cuts like that. You can add even more random cuts to make these more random. Add a decimate modifier above uh, the particle system and uh, decimate this. You can see we randomize the mesh, uh, but uh, that will cause the particle system to freak out. So just go to the particle system and make sure that the source is set to modifier stack. Now, if we hit play, we see the chunks are a bit more interesting. Just like that, we, we need to give these thickness. So we're going to give this add a solidify modifier. Just increase the thickness a bit. And while we are at that, we can add, we can set up some materials. I'm going to use my asset library and see if I have any concrete materials. Uh, you can find it in the description. So, so this is our concrete wall. We need to set up another concrete. Uh, so let me find maybe, let me just use this. And uh, in the modifiers, go under material and use that as uh, the ring. Yeah, so yeah, that's what we want. Now, I don't want these dots. So I'm going to go to the particle system and under render, I can change this to object, but don't select any instance. Uh, we don't want to use any instance here. We're just getting rid of those dots. We don't want any initial velocity. Now we want to influence the gravity using an image. And uh, that image is just going to be a trace of our logo. We're going to use dynamic paint to create a mask that will influence our gravity as uh, this logo is being traced. The problem is that because this is a curve object, if you go to the physics tab, it doesn't support dynamic paint 
option. So I'm going to first remove the depth and uh, that will disable the mapping here and just put this aside. I can even call it logo because only meshes support dynamic paint. I'm going to just add a plane, uh, rotate it and just position it where the logo should be. Go to geometry nodes and set up a new geometry nodes. The only thing we're going to be doing here is just turning this curve into a mesh. So I'm going to bring this logo and uh, you can even expose this option in case you want to switch out uh, the logo. So I'm going to use this as the new geometry just like that and uh, now if we go to the modifiers you can see that we have the, the dynamic paint option. Now I want to ch first change this to, uh, to a mesh, curved mesh and give this a, th a thickness. So I'm just going to use a curve, a curve circle just like that. I reduce the radius. You can even export, expose these parameters and for the animation we can use a, a trim curve option here uh, that way we can just uh, trace that. You can keyframe this property or better you can use a map range and uh, that way you can map the length of your timeline to a value of 0 to 1. So if I connect this to the start and uh, we want to use the scene time which will just get the number of frames. So it's mapping 100 frames to a value of 0 to 1 and that just gives us the animation we want. Now it seems to be flipped so we can we can just reverse these values so that the minimum is one and the maximum is zero. That way we have the animation we want and you can expose this parameter here just so if we want 50 frames uh, then we can do that without using any keyframes. Now we need to set up our dynamic paint. I'm going to first turn off all these effects. So now I can go to the physics tab, add dynamic paint. Uh, this is going to be our canvas, add canvas. First, we're going to test this out on a vertex and uh, everything can stay as is. Uh, then you can select this tracer object and also give it a dynamic paint option. But this time type brush, add brush. And uh, you want to use mesh plus proximity. Under the canvas, you have to go back to the output and make sure you have a paint and weight layer vertex groups selected. You can turn that on so that we can create a vertex color to look at. So now if we go to vertex paint, uh, you can see how that is tracing the logo. Now that we have confirmed that that works, we can go to the physics. We can go back to the dynamic paint and change from vertex to image. You can increase the resolution if you want better results. So I'm just going to use 512 and I'm also going to UV unwrap this. It's already UV unwrapped. So I think that's okay. Uh, that's it. Just select where you want this to be saved. And I will just call this paint and just bake that in there and hit bake. You can even go into that folder and uh, look at the sequence you have just baked and it seems okay. So now we can go to the material tab, shader editor and uh, just import that image sequence. So I'll use a texture image sequence and uh, go to that and just select everything. Uh, this is just to test and make sure that everything is looking fine. I'm just going to preview this material. Let me go to, uh, let's see, are we looking at the right? No, uh, I need to go to this and import my image sequence. And let's see, why is this? Turn on auto refresh. And uh, let's see, start offset. Okay, everything looks perfect. Now that we have confirmed that, we can bring back all of this detail and we can now go to the particle system, scroll down to textures, create a new texture, go into that and use an image. Select the image sequence. I can refresh. Let's use 250 frames. Okay, we can go to the mapping, change this from generated to UV, go to the influence and uh, turn off generated and turn on gravity. You can scroll down and turn on color ramp, uh, select this dark node and bring the alpha up so that we can see everything clearly. Turn the contrast up so that the influence is very small. In the image setting, make sure you have auto refresh, otherwise you won't see the animation. So now let's see, let me just the end frame should also be one so that all the particles are emitted at the same point and uh, that's when you will see that everything works. So and you can see that our logo is dressing exactly as we want. So let's uh, increase the subdivisions to something like four and it's all going to depend on your own project. 
One thing we might want to do is push these particles out so that they are being ejected out of the wall. To do that, we can add a wind force behind this wall. So shift A and add a wind force, increase the influence to something like 10. If you hit play, the whole build, the whole block will just be pushed forward. Uh, we don't want that. So I'm going to select this and uh, under the texture, you can turn on force field so that only the painted areas are affected by this force field. Now you can see that those are, go are also being pushed. Now you can do other things like in the particle system, you can give these a rotation uh, based on their velocity turn on dynamic so that we have some angular velocity and I'm using a setting of one so that uh, let's see how much. Uh, let's try 30 because I want them to rotate. Okay, that seems it's too much. Try 10. If you have a lot of subdivisions, you also want to have a lot of particles. So let's make this 1000 so that we have more chunks. Yeah, that way these become really, really small like that. And uh, yeah, I th think that looks better. So we get better tracing. Okay, you can add a ground and uh, this is just going to be, let's use, let me use this as well. So uh, this is going to be a collision object. Yeah, because when these particles fall, they continue ro rotating. Uh, what I'm going to do is just come back to the particle system and just reduce angular velocity to something like two so that they are not rotating too much. Uh, let me hide this for a second. Yeah. The more subdivisions you have, the better the quality, but of course, uh, that is also going to slow uh, the simulation a bit. But, so to create a leather beam, we just need this tracer object. So just select it and go to the geometry nodes we created for it, a tracer object, just like this. And we want this last point here. And since this is a curve, we can use the end point selection to select the end point of this curve. So I can use a delete geometry and just delete all the points, but the end point. Uh, if I delete this, you can see I'm deleting just the end points, but we need the reverse of this. So I need a Boolean math with the operation of not so that we get only the last points. And now you can see I have the point that moves and I also have this last point. So I can turn this into two points, curve two points, and we only need one point just like that. With that, we can turn this point to a mesh using points to vertex, just like that. Now we have a point that moves around. Now I can extrude this point using the extrude node, remove the offset and use a set position and we can use a different vector for that position. And we only want the top part. So yeah, you can see now this is in one position. Oh, it seems to be moving the wrong part of the curve. So I need the opposite of this. So I'm going to use a Boolean math to use. So let's bring back the original mesh. You can see how this is looking. Yeah, so we are tracing that. And let's see, can we, yeah, we can push this y axis uh, which i think is this because we rotated the object yeah so that's going to be our laser or you can use an empty object to be the original source of the laser beam so i can bring that in make sure that this is set to relative and just use its location as uh, the new position and uh, now you can see we have a, a laser pointing from here to this before we join you can turn this to a mesh mesh to curve make it small add any effects to it that you want so set a material you have a laser uh, this starts right away connected i don't want that i can use a trim curve uh where is that Bef yeah a trim curve here so that we can start we can just have this animated and uh, i think we have our timeline here we have this this is what is animating uh, the trim so i can use that i can even have another map range uh, that uses this value basically it is turning this map range we're using to animate into a trim 
and mention for, for this laser. So if you want this to run faster, you just increase the values here. And so this starts right away, just like that. So if say we want a different logo, let's say this Batman logo, again, you need to trace image, convert this to a curve. The tracer object can use our Batman logo. The logo has moved away from here because this curve object has its origin at the center here. So we need to reset this origin to, to geometry and that way our tracer also goes back here. We need to bake again. So just select the bricks, go to the physics and bake again. You need to go to the texture and refresh that. Now you can see we get our Batman logo. So when you're rendering, you don't want to render this line. So you can add an option to disable it. You can use a viewport, use a switch geometry, a switch. Uh, I think it has to be around here. Yeah, so if it's viewport, then show the geometry. If it's render, then don't render uh, the geometry. Yeah, that's it. You can add more effects, like some interesting lighting in the background uh, to make this look even cooler. Uh, but uh, I th yeah, thanks for watching. Project files are going to be in the description.